Hey y'all, it is Saturday, June 17th, 2023, and in this video, <clears throat> I'm going to teach you about and demonstrate how to do an ICT silver bullet model. And I'm sure that there are plenty of videos in um, out there on YouTube, there's tons of them that already describe how to do this, but I decided that I'd show it on something a little bit different, not just a um, uh, stock index. I decided I was going to show it on crude oil because same principles apply on really any asset probably other than crypto because I'm not exactly but even even crypto probably too but all right let's get into it so there are three setup times that Michael teaches when it comes to um, when it comes to the silver bullet and those three are London which is three to four uh, three to four New York local time that's when the London Stock Exchange is Stock Exchange opens, and then 10 to 11, New York local time, which is when the London Stock Exchange closes, and then 1400 to 1500, New York local time, which is 2 to 3 p.m., New York local time. Um, but you'll find that for things like gold, silver, um, and commodities, that their spot, mar spot markets close uh, earlier than the indexes, that um, the, the last silver bullet doesn't really work for commodities. So anyways, um, let's get on with it. So what we want to do is we first we want to block out three to four. Okay. So three to four is what's known as the setup time. So, we are only entering the market if we see a setup during this hour, okay? Now, the first component of the ICT silver bullet model is the time window, okay? So, time is a fixed variable and it should be between 3 and 4. That's our London silver bullet. That's when the London Stock Exchange opens. Okay. The second variable of an ICT silver bullet model that we want to look at, other than just blocking out our time, is we want to identify liquidity that we believe that price is likely to go target. So when you're actually taking the setup, you want to be on a five minute or below, and we'll talk about that. But when we're looking at liquidity, we want to we want to look for we want to look for liquidity that we believe price is going to target. Now, what is liquidity? Liquidity is going to be found above short-term and long-term highs, especially previous days and previous weeks highs, as well as the inverse uh, lows. So when we look here, we've got two options for where we think that price might want to set up. So we could look for downside liquidity, but crude oil at this point had been trading down quite a bit. So you can see that crude oil had taken a tumble down to below $67. So the sell side had been worked quite a bit. So I don't like the, the sell side as much. And the reason why I don't like the sell side as much in this example is in part because we see that we have this structure down below. What I do like, if I'm looking up here, is I like these relative equal highs. So we know that price is always going to be interested in going after uh, liquidity. And targeting liquidity and one of the key liquidity signatures we have is a cluster of relatively equal highs so we see that our high here on crude oil back on Wednesday was 70 spot 46 and the prior high to that was 70 spot 49 70 spot 49 and then 70 spot 46 and 70 spot 45 so that's going to be seen by retail this these equal highs are going to be seen by retail as uh, strong resistance so we know that there's going to be a lot of stops a lot of interest up in that area so that's the second part that we identify we identify a draw on liquidity now this doesn't necessarily mean that price is always going to make it to the uh, draw on liquidity but it's going to do it's going to draw to it meaning it's going to be attracted to it now a lot of the times you are going to find that that it will deliver in fact but not every time okay so 
The first thing that we do is we want to identify the setup time, and then we want to identify liquidity that we think that price is going to target. Third thing that we want to do when we drill down to our five minute time frame is we want to find an inefficiency, a fair value gap, a gap or volume imbalance, one of Michael's or Inner Circle Traders uh, inefficiencies that price is going to tr uh, either form during the setup time or before the setup time. Okay, During the setup time or before the setup time. It does not have to form. There's no rule that it has to form during the setup time. I understand that in his introductory video he does say uh, that it needs to form in the setup time, but it doesn't. Um, he ends up correcting himself later. The silver bullet setup, the inefficiency, can be formed prior to the setup time. So what sort of inefficiencies are we looking for? Well, depending on where we want to target liquidity, ideally we'd find the opposite of that. But it could be a fair value gap, it could be an actual gap, it could be a very long wick, or it could be a volume imbalance. It, it needs to be somewhere where only one side of the market was offered. So we're essentially betting, we're ascertaining that price is going to want to come in during the setup time and reprice to an inefficiency that it either creates during the setup time or before the setup time and then price is going to want to expand out after the setup time um, up into liquidity. Now sometimes you'll find that within the same hour it will find an inefficiency and then go target liquidity but that's fairly rare. I, I, that doesn't happen most of the time. Most of the time price is going to need some time to trade outside of the setup time and then go find liquidity. Now you're probably wondering okay if you're a little bit advanced well why why am I not picking this inefficiency and then going short? Now first off that actually would have given you a trade okay so you could have taken this inefficiency gone buy side inefficiency gone short and then made 40 cents on that which is not bad. The problem is that remember these inefficiencies are a dime a dozen they're 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 valuable but they they happen a lot. The key part of the analysis is not the inefficiency. The inefficiency is really just the entry mechanism. The key is identifying the liquidity that price is going to want to draw to. Okay and crude oil had been trading down we would plundered we had already plundered the sell side liquidity on Tuesday and so it was unlikely that crude oil wanted to go right back down at this point and go revisit that sell side liquidity it was more likely that price wanted to go and find uh, buy side buy side liquidity so when you're picking your direction you need to really examine and really make a good judgment. Usually, I'll just be honest with you, uh, it's not going to target the nearest liquidity. It's kind of going to go further away because we're talking about when we're entering between three and four when the London Stock Exchange opens, we're talking about a lot of um, institutional money, a lot of smart money. Uh, the amount of orders that are being picked up during this time is a lot. So we expect there to be quite a, a big movement, a displacement away from the setup time uh, because there's going to be, they need to offset distribute a lot of positions. Okay, so with that in mind, the first component of the ICT silver bullet model is going to be your draw on liquidity. This is usually going to be equal highs, equal lows, relative equal highs, relative equal lows. Sometimes it might be literally a single high. Usually, it, the, the more the merrier. All right, you want to see if there's like a double top, double bottom, triple bottom, triple top. Anything that retail is going to be interested in or retail logic is going to get you interested in, that's kind of your ideal scenario. Now, it could just be a single high and it could just be a single low as well, as long as it's nice and obvious. Okay, but again, equal highs and equal lows, in my opinion, are better than single highs and single lows, but it, you know, you could see either one. Okay, so look, the liquidity target, the target is the first part of the component. The second component is the time, which for our London Silver Bullet is three to four. The next component, the third component, is going to be our inefficiency. So ICT talks all the time about um, fair value gaps, so I'm not going to reteach what a fair value gap is here. Uh, I might do that in another video. 
but this would have been what we call a cell side inefficiency. Now there was actually another one lower right here, but let's pretend like you didn't see the absolute lowest cell side inefficiency. Let's just, you know, you saw this kind of big middle one. Why is this price inefficient? Well, it's inefficient because you can see it only offered one side of the marketplace. It only offered the buy side, so it's sell side inefficient. So we're gonna draw that box over to the setup time and then we're going to label that. I label it London Silver. Okay, I don't even call them silver bullets. I just call them silvers. The idea is that we want to get long somewhere in this sell side inefficiency, and then we want to hold. With the London Silver Bullet, you really want to try and hold up into equities open and sometimes beyond equities open. Okay, you definitely, you know, you, you there are three silver bullet setup time, time frames. And ideally, you would be out of the trade by the time that the New York AM session silver bullet sets up. In these commodities like crude oil, copper, gold, they work a little bit different. Your biggest time is definitely just going to be London. Um, but you really only have, if you're not using the Asian silver bullet that I talked about before, then you only have two silver bullets really on, on commodities. But anyways... We get long here in the sell side inefficiency and we wait. Now, you can see that price immediately targets the nearest liquidity, which was 42 cents higher, 42 points higher. Now it's $10 a point on crude oil. So if you had one contract, that would have been $430, $500 in 25 minutes. That's not bad. That's really not a bad trade just right there. However, had you held on, okay, instead of just looking at the absolute nearest liquidity, if you would have held on to your silver bullet trade, it would have gone into profit, come back down into drawdown, which I agree would not have been fun. But take a look at later on, later in the day during the cash session, the New York session on crude oil, the magnitude. It's 206 points. That's $2,060 for one crude oil contract. That's not, that's not a bad living right there. So one of the things that I want to advise you on these silver bullets, let's go through the, let's go through the steps again. Okay, so here are our steps. So step one, identify the setup time for London. It's going to be three to four. Step two, identify the likely liquidity target. We saw up here at 70 spot 51, we had a lot of equal highs and we know that liquidity is going to be resting above that. So we identified our like liquidity target. Step three is identify an inefficiency created during or before the setup time. I prefer when it's created before the setup time, but it could be created during the setup time. Step four, 
in or in on the inefficiency during the setup time. So had we gotten along here on a limit or somewhere around 60, 55, we would have been filled around anywhere from the London Open up until 330. Okay, step five, if we're pyramiding, we wait for price to break out of this range and then pyramid on sell side inefficiencies as we make our way to the target. That's only if desired. If you're just trying to mitigate your risk, then don't pyramid. And then that's it. That's our silver bullet. Okay, step one, identify the setup time. Okay, step two, identify a likely liquidity target. Should be far away from price, ideally where long-term Long-term liquidity would be, or where institutional fund liquidity would be, preferably. I, You know that I prefer these equal highs and equal lows to a single high and low, but either way, you're just looking for where hedge funds, mutual funds, insurance companies would have their stops. Um, step four, enter in on an efficiency during the setup time. Okay, Your stop would be down at 68.13 here, which is quite a big stop on crude oil. So to be frank with you, you know, you probably just want to enter in with one contract here. Step five, pyramid on the way uh, to the target, entering in on more sell side inefficiencies as they are formed. And that's it. That is your silver bullet. I wanted to give an example on something other than a uh, stock index because these things work, whether it's commodities. Um, I'm not going to say that it works for Bitcoin. But it works for commodities. I've seen it work on copper. I've seen it work on silver, gold. Um, you are you are targeting institutional side or large where large resting liquidity would be, and you're entering in where smart money uh, that wants to go and and target that liquidity should be entering in, which would be the London Stock Exchange Open. Okay, so. That has been an explanation of the ICT Silver Bullet. That is what we learned in this video. Um, I will probably be back for something later today, uh, but that is it for now. Good, good luck and good trading. You know, one okay, I sh you shouldn't do this. One last thing: when you're entering in on these silver bullets, your stops need to be like your stop here would be down here. Okay, I'm sorry that I I haven't stopped the video. Your stop would be all the way down here. Okay, so just so you know, your stop needs to be fairly far away a lot of the time. And oftentimes, price is going to want to come and retrace all the way back down, and you've got to be comfortable with that if you want to make the big money. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Um, and with that, in this video, we learned the ICT Silver Bullet Setup. I'll probably be back with more examples of this. This is my new model. I'll probably teach it uh, 50 times. Okay, this is the model that I want to master, so I will probably teach it multiple times now, on different asset classes, you name it. I'll show you the same exact model over and over and over again. Okay, in this video, we learned the ICT Silver Bullet. Bye-bye.